And so, my friends, uh, we're hearing reports that the Russians are coming, that there was uh, hacks into Los Alamos and uh, other nuclear facilities, and there's going to be grid shutdowns and all of that. And it's, uh, you know, ultimately informational at this point, but we have to remember uh, Livy, you know, one of the... Um, Republic-era Roman writers who wrote that the terror of the Roman name will be such that the world shall know that once a Roman army has laid siege to a city, nothing will move it, not the rigors or winter nor the weariness of months and years, that it knows no end but victory and is ready if a swift and sudden stroke will not serve to preserve until that victory is achieved. So essentially, Livy was talking about um, scorched earth, which is what the Romans did. They would go ahead and they would completely destroy one city and say, you're the example. And it's what uh, other armies in the past did, Babylonians, Assyrians, uh, you know, um, Israelites, right? Uh, and it's what... Um, was being pushed by uh, Michael Aquino in, uh, you know, the mind war operative, as I put it. And he talked about rapport, which is, he said, um, you know, why do you trust one talking head over another? Uh, it's because of that rapport. And he would refer to the comprehensive dictionary of psychological and psychoanalytical terms. And um, then he would go ahead and he would misinterpret uh, Egyptian mythology. So you had a guy who uh, certainly had a lot of intelligence and certainly was able to worm his way up uh, the ladder in the military. Uh, but he did it um, by the rapport <laughs> that he engaged in. That was his deal, which is he was an influencer of influencers, which is exactly what Edward Bernays was. And I believe that, um, you know, Aquino uh, studied the classics um, and his uh, mind war uh, was a way to convince the military um, that this was, you know, the future. I think Aquino said, uh, mind war is the deliberate, aggressive convincing of all participants in a war that we will win that war. And that's ultimately... Uh, the psychological makeup of what we call the deep state. So uh, my issue uh, with this Aquino character is that he had a guy who spent 40 years in our military. And this guy was, uh, you know, Hannibal Lecter, for lack of a better word. What were we doing taking his visions and bringing them into national policies. Uh, why did he achieve uh, <laughs> um, such status? You know, why was he hanging out with uh, <clears throat> Colonel Vallely, you know, and others? He, um, if you look into Colonel Vallely, uh, he, you know, was... Um, literally the glue, the comprehensive glue that uh, he could, you know, he could uh, send things out to various, um, you know, commands and agencies and offices and publications. And, um, you know, literally he was the guy who would say, hey, you know, this is what you should read. Study your PSYOP, right? And um, people will say, hey, you know, the Pentagon uh, never engaged in uh, black magic. It's not true. It's simply not true. And, uh, you know, th this battle ultimately is about world domination and mind control. It is the Manchurian candidate that we're looking at. And we have to keep our humanity. So that's that. You know, people would uh, fall into uh, Aquino's trap 
which is, he would say, uh, conventional warfare uh, lacks reason. And he, you know, has a point. You know, you go in there uh, uh, with your broadswords and, uh, you know, get bloody and you'd be doing it for, um, you know, blood and, and treasure. And that's how uh, the military has always attracted young men, too. And when you get older, you realize war is hell. So, uh, you know, what did he do? He did the same thing that Bernays did, which is, you know, let's influence the influencers. Let's go ahead and find out who the war profiteers are. Let's, um, you know, find out uh, the right companies, the right government agencies, um, you know. And it's just like uh, Sherlock Holmes, which is these corporations will get fat on, uh, you know, munitions and helicopters and tanks and guns, and, you know, and so on and so forth. So that's what it is. Uh, but we as a people, our humanity is in our music and in our poetry and in our kindness and in our gifts. And that has to be our weaponry and our armor. Thanks for listening.